My mother was very idealistic even through the whole war. She taught me to be kind and to forgive. I thought that's really hard to do. Here is my ring, which has given me more than joy. It gave me a feeling of belonging. My name is Dana Schwartz. This is a story of three rings. One day in Poland, in Lwów, I watched the nanny when she was busy talking. I crept up and I walked over the wire and I picked the daisy. And as I picked the daisy, I heard a tremendous boom. And I thought, oh God is angry with me. I'd done something very wrong. And a man with a big white dog ran past us and said, go home, the war has started. I knew I had started the war. One day, there was a knock on the door. I was about six. And there stood this gorgeous, tall, handsome German soldier of high rank. And he wanted to see our house. But he walked, and he walked and looked around and said, aha, uh -huh, very nice. Mommy, mommy, they like our house? Shh, shh, my mother said. They looked at mother and said, yes, be out in a half hour, and you can each take a small bag. The ghetto had 300,000 people in it. They were killing people, people were starving to death. And one day, my dad came home. He said, it's very bad news. There is an action coming. Action is exactly like cowboys herding the cattle onto the train. They were going to concentration camps, right, to death camps. It was the last I saw of my grandmother. I remember looking up high into the sky and saying, God will never find us here. So my dad wanted us to hide. My father found that this courtyard of the building had uh, some steps and he realized that if you crawled behind the three steps there was a hole and we lived in that hole. It was like a sardine can. People were, there were several people lined up in two layers. My father had a box of sugar cubes. He would put a sugar cube in my mouth, and that's how I got the calories to keep living. One day, my mother was so shaken, she took me and she went to the neighbor upstairs, and she said, I'll give you this ring if you take my daughter for one week and just hide her in your new place. It was a one-bedroom apartment. They put me in the bedroom. There was no furniture there. There was just a heap of newspapers. And I would sleep there and cover myself with the newspapers. My mother had a week without having to worry about me. She knocked on the door of a guy who was an Aryan, and she said to him, will you hide me for a week? I have this ring I'll give to you. He let her in and he said, I'll bring you some food and water. He locked her from the outside and he didn't come back. And she was thirsty and she was hungry and she was terrified. So a week went by, and my mother was in the pole when I walked down. And I was so happy to see her again. My mother and I were going to go on Aryan papers as non-Jews. And we met my father at the gate, and we no longer had the Star of David on us, and he had the Star of David. But my mother said, you are not to show that you know him. You keep your hands at the sides at all time. There I was seeing my daddy, whom I loved above everything else, and I wanted to hug him. 
but I was not allowed. And I had to turn around and walk away from my father forever. And we got to the village, and my mother went to the baker and said, look, I have a ring. It's my engagement ring, and I'll give you everything as long as you promise to give me a piece of bread every day. We survived. There were 300,000 Jews when we went into the ghetto. A week and a half after we left, they opened the gates because there was no one left. My mother knocked on the door of the next door neighbor of our first apartment, the one we had before the war. It was very dangerous because people would kill you if you wanted to get, take back your stuff or take back your apartment or house. This was now after the war. She said, do you have any little thing that you could give me that might have landed in your apartment? And she gave her back our ladle. One day, we got some money. And my mother said, honey, what do you think we should do with that money? And I said, mommy, I would like one of those dinners that we used to have long ago. She took me ne next to the window and she said, look, there are German kids and they're hungry because the Germans lost the war and you want such a fancy dinner, it's not fair. And I said, mommy, their daddy killed my daddy. I don't want to share. And the next day she made a huge soup and she walked downstairs and she said to all the German children, is anybody here hungry? And by golly, they all came. And I wonder if my dad would have taught me the same thing. But I learned it from my mother. And so my mother taught me to do what I can to make the world a better place. And boy, have I tried. <laughs>